If you've got a property under contract, but you're not sure if it is actually going to be a good deal, then you're going to want to watch today's show because my client Lorenzo is in that same situation. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. I am your host, James Wise, and this is the show on Holton Wise TV where we work together one-on-one. -on -one. And the way you could work with us, it's an a la carte type service, right? Holton Wise, we are real real estate investors, brokers, property managers. We have insurance. We have title. We got all of it, right? So we can do everything for you. So if you want uh, to invest in the Cleveland market, we can do everything, okay? We could literally take you from top to bottom, handle the whole thing for you. But we don't have to, right? There's 5,000 other realtors, okay? There's other property management companies. There's other general contractors. There's other insurance companies. There's other title companies, right? We are here to provide you what you want on an a la carte basis, right? You pay to play. What you want to pay us for, we will do. Nothing more, nothing less, right? So I got a client, Lorenzo. He's in that situation situation okay Lorenzo recently flew to the Cleveland area uh, met up with another real estate agent liked that agent quite a bit and uh, they toured a bunch of properties and he ended up under contract right you ended up under contract brother and you're under contract on this particular property and you sent me your contract and you're a little nervous like hey maybe this you know i'm doing the numbers here and i'm thinking maybe the deal isn't exactly what i thought you wanted me to look over it right uh perhaps the the realtor you're working with maybe uh she doesn't do as much uh rental real estate as she does uh traditional real estate that's very common so guys we're not here uh to to step in and get you know, get rid of all these other realtors if you're working with, right? If, if you've met another realtor and um, you like that realtor, you like working with them, and especially if you want to drive around Cleveland looking at properties and going out to dinner, things of that nature, hey, man, we implore you to work with those realtors because, guys, sorry, Jay Wise is not going to drive you around Cleveland. I'm, I'm well past that stage in my career. Uh, so we wouldn't want to talk you out of that, right? But do as much due diligence as you possibly can. What Lorenzo did in this contract, and this was such a smart move, brother, you, in your additional terms, you put uh, contingent on other buyer due diligence, right? That is essentially like a blanket get-out-of-jail-free card, right? So you have the contractual authority to have me analyze this, and based upon whatever I say or whatever you feel – Based upon what I say, you can kill this contract and there is no legal recourse against you, or at least there shouldn't be, because that is perfectly legal. You know, if if this turns out that this deal is not what you're looking for, I'm going to help you try to, you know, kill this contract and move on. I would not, as a real estate broker, try to help you guys kill a legally binding contract. That ain't going to happen. I wouldn't do that. But Lorenzo, I asked you to send me your contract when you were talking to me about this deal. And sure enough, you had the foresight to put in a clause like that. The seller had the opportunity to negotiate that with you. They could have said, no, we're not going to go under contract with a clause like that. Because truth be told, guys, I'll be honest with you. Uh, if I'm on the selling side, right, like my other show, the investment properties for sale show. I'm the number one seller of rental real estate in Cleveland, baby. Ain't nobody sells more of this stuff than I do. I don't let shit like this fly. There is no contract that I'm accepting on the sales side that's going to let this random get out of jail card free into the deal, right? It's a weak contract because honestly, Lorenzo, you could just toss this contract, you know, tear it up whenever you want, right? As a buyer and me right now working in the capacity as your advocate, only concerned about your needs, I love it. I fucking love that you did that, bro. Good job out of you. But again, guys, if you're watching my other show and now I'm over here as the seller, I got my seller hat on, 
and you guys are trying to make bids and I got properties because guys I got I got the biggest the biggest following the biggest network out of anybody selling this stuff here in Cleveland so if I got multiple offers coming in and, and you're trying to get your offer accepted because you see a hot deal <laughs> if you think you're gonna try to squeeze some bullshit in there like that it ain't gonna fly I'm it's gonna get denied right so I love it from a buyer's agent perspective, but if I'm the seller and I know what I got, I got a solid deal, I'm probably going to reject it. But, you know, you take a lot of other agents, maybe they don't operate that business that way. Maybe they're not familiar with terms like that, like terms like this. These are common terms in the investor space, guys. We, I, I, know, I know what you mean when you're trying to do this, right? I, I understand how investors are looking at it, right? But if you're in, like, the residential space where 99.9% .9 of the other 5,000 realtors in the Cleveland market are, they don't see things like that. They probably didn't notice it. They didn't think about it, right? Like most people, you know, you drive them around. They go inside the house. They like what the house looks like. They like the kitchen. It's nice. They love the school district for their kids. And then they fucking buy the motherfucker, right? When they do their inspection, as long as something insane isn't happening, they're envisioning their lives in that home and they want to live in the home. We're different though, y'all. We're real estate investors. We are buying this as a financial vehicle. So we're, you know, we're trying to do uh, as much due diligence as we can. But, Here's the other thing, too, you got to understand. If the seller does let that fly, it's it's not, again, if there's a lot of interest, it's not market competitive to put something like this in there. If the seller lets it fly, either A, the agents, again, totally drop the ball, not used to it, or it could be, it could be the demand on that property is really low because maybe, just maybe, it's a little bit overpriced. And, of course, you had that thought, too, Lorenzo. That's why we're all here. That's why I'm here. So, Let's get into a little bit more detail on the property. Without further ado, 3231 Sycamore Road, Cleveland Heights, 44118. Been on the market nine days. It's pending contract, no showings, because you, my man, locked it up. Listed at 159.9. Now, you got this locked up, uh, technically speaking. You have it locked up at 156.9, but you're asking the seller to pay 3%. Uh, towards your closing costs, prepaids, and points, right? So that's a net offer, net offer to the seller, $152,193, right? Now, as far as some thoughts that you've given me on the property, you were given a rental estimate uh, between the people you've spoken to, interviewed or whatnot, uh, agents, PMs, contractors, local folks, whoever you've been talking to, uh, you think the property should rent anywhere between 750 and 950 a unit. And I think that's that's close, right? I put the my best estimate of the market rent here, 800 a unit. I believe, uh, like if I was managing this property, I believe we would have no issues renting each of these units for $800 a month. So $1,600 a year, $19,200 would come in. And you told me it's pretty much a turnkey uh, investment, right? You told me they fixed a lot of stuff, and they did, right? They did a nice job renovating this. This is one of the units. We got the nice-looking floors. I mean, honestly, to be 100% honest with you, this is probably just me being picky because sometimes – you don't need to do it. I, I would have liked to see this trim be made white. Okay, they did it to the other unit. I think the other unit just looks more modern. I think this is a very dated uh, type of wood finish here. But that that's just me being ultra picky. I still think it'll rent for about 800 Okay, I, I, I would like to see white, but, you know, it should still rent for 800 So, again, me just being picky, but, like, the other stuff they did, like, this is great, man. They got the nice neutral color, and you see they got white in some of the other rooms. Again, they ran that floor all the way through. It looks good, dude. It's a, it's a good-looking uh, unit, okay? This is going to be me being picky again. You're buying this, like, totally renovated house. You're under contract for 156 k It's a decent amount of money. I don't know why they couldn't have spent the extra, like, 400 bucks to get a more modern vanity in there. Like, what the fuck, dude? Like, that is just dated. They just cheaped out. Like, it's like 400 fucking dollars. I don't know why they didn't do that. They definitely should have did that. Like, that that needs to be a, a modern white vanity. It should not be that old, dated, like, 1990s-looking wood color. Um, that That's something I'm a little upset with. The kitchen, I like what they did in the kitchen. Personally... In this market, you're going uh, 
for like you know higher earning tenants you don't want to deal with section 8 like Lorenzo you told me you know you have like five I think you said you have five properties in other states okay where you're from you've been a landlord uh, for several years so you've been around the block you know what you like you know what you don't like okay you told me you're like dude I don't want to deal with section 8 I'm not interested in like being in the hood you watch my other show the tenants from hell show great job out of you Everybody else in the show notes, check it out, Google it, whatever you got to do. Tennis from Hell, Holton Wise. We got some great content. If you're thinking about buying some like high risk properties, check out that show. So you told me you're like, bro, I don't, I don't want to deal with that, right? I want like nicer properties, nicer tenants. Cool. I, they did a great job in the kitchen. I love it. I, I, I mean, this is great. All this right here, I love this. I wish they would have went stainless steel. They could have did it for like a minimal price. Like this actually looks to me, I can't tell. But it looks like it might be a little bit like smaller sized fridge. So I would have liked to see stainless. I see that this is electric. I love that. That's smart. I know a lot of people prefer gas when they're buying a home. This goes back to the two different types of realtors, right? Realtors who deal with investors, realtors who deal with home buyers. When you're trying to buy a home, guys, I get it. Y'all like gas. It cooks more evenly, right? We got gas in my house. I love it. My wife, she's cooking up a storm in there, man. It's great. We got, I mean, <laughs> we got good dinners at my house, okay? But electric is better for rentals, right? The reason being, you don't ever have that risk of gas leaking. You don't ever have, like, your tenants having, like, a party. Somebody leans their butt up against the thing, starts leaking the gas, you know, uh, people smoking. You, you could have a fire, right? It's a low risk, okay? It's very, very low risk. But when we're real estate investors, we need to be looking at any risk and try to mitigate it. This business is all about mitigating risks. When I run the numbers on this property here in a minute, I'm going to break down averages, average costs for you so you can understand what you should be making over the long term with this property. But dude, a lot of these are based upon assumptions and just being in the business for a long time, knowing how these things typically average out. There's an unlimited amount of variables, though, dude. Like, any property you get has the ability to fucking go right to the ground, man. Tank right to the bottom. Any property. Any property could be perfect. If you get a house in the ghetto... Your odds of having bad tenants and evictions are higher than if you get a nice property like this, but that don't mean the first tenant we put in won't turn out to be a nightmare. It's very possible. So it's all about mitigating risk. So electric appliances in your rentals, guys. That's a little pro tip for you guys. Not much of a risk mitigation, but it's still there. Why not do it, right? All right. So just, you know, the rest of the unit, good, clean, fresh unit. Definitely going to have no issues getting 800, Okay. Well, we're in the other unit now, 800, right? 800 for both of these bad boys. They're both pretty much identical units, looking the same. All right, looking swell. One thing just bugs me, though. This, you know, again, in the other unit, really bugs me. Wish they would have did a better vanity than that, but it's not the end of the world. One thing, too, I also noticed, too, right? Uh, these furnaces do not look that new. Those hot water tanks, they look pretty new to me. Uh, these furnaces look like they're a little bit on the older end. I would guess they're probably over 15 years old. You know, we're talking about, um, which is fine, right? That's not like the end of the world, but you're talking like paying a premium for like a full-on turnkey property, et cetera, et cetera. Cost to replace these furnaces is going to be 3K each furnace. Furnaces should typically last you 30 years. These look like they're at least halfway through their life expectancy. That's something I noticed. Okay, I thought you should know that. All right, your attic. Uh, another thing why we're talking, right? A lot of people see attics like this, and they, they see the space, and they think, oh, hell yeah, man, let's finish that off. We get more rental income. Sometimes people put third units in there. If you can buy a property with a third unit already done, cool, okay? But it's inefficient cost-wise to try to do it today because the standards, when they originally did this back in the day, standards were lower. Building standards were lower, right? So you can get kind of grandfathered into some stuff. Whereas if you do it today, cost prohibitive. If you have additional money, instead of putting it into your existing property, the way real estate prices are in the Cleveland market, you would just buy another property. So... This is really, you know, don't 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 think you're adding a third unit because that's not going to fly, okay? All right. So that is the house. Nice house, 800 each unit. Cool deal. One of your questions to me, you're telling me like, hey, man, I think it's going to make 
you know, you're guesstimating you'll make about $200 a month and you wanted to know if I thought that was good enough for you to continue on with the deal. I did my own analysis, okay, and I don't think you are going to make $200 on this one, all right? I think you're going to make a lot less, Lorenzo. Now, 16 comes in. That's 19200 a month, right? Back to what I was talking about, right? Like, these are estimates, right? So repairs, maintenance, vacancy, and non-payment capex. We are going to average cost those, right? 80 a month. So that money is really going to go in your pocket until there's an issue. But I'm going to make sure you calculate for those. This is... You know, it's rental investing, man. We're mitigating our risks as much as possible. Yeah, you're going to have a lot fewer evictions in neighborhoods like this over the long run. But again, the first tenant you put in could get evicted. So we are calculating that, right? We're going to add to that because eventually those things are going to happen, right? Those older furnaces I told you about, that 6000 that's why you're saving up $80 a month for your CapEx, okay? Because eventually you're going to have a $6,000 bill, right? And if your tenants do not pay that rent, and you got to evict them. You're going to have that vacancy and non-payment cost there. But then, of course, after that, you're going to have the repair and maintenance costs because we got to fix up the unit again, right? Like those units, man, they looked fresh. They look nice. They don't look like that after you evict a tenant, bro. You got to do some paint and stuff, right? So that's that. Taxes, this is uh, one of the, the negatives of Cleveland Heights. It's one of the higher tax suburbs in the Cleveland market, okay? So tax is going to be 280 a month. Insurance, it's a kind of an expensive property in relation to some of the other multis we put on here. So you're looking at about a hundo a month for that, which, by the way, everybody, Farmers Insurance, I own a farmer's office. So if you guys have rental properties anywhere, coast to coast, guys, and you want to lower your insurance premium in the show notes below, Let's give you a free quote today. All I deal with is landlords. And when you own a farmer's insurance, you can get appointed through other companies. So, like, not only can I quote you guys with, like, farmer's products, we have, like, all kinds of other products and other insurance, smaller niche providers you've never heard of uh, that we push our real estate investors into. And you guys get really, really low premiums. Like, you guys wouldn't even be getting a farmer's policy from us. Uh, it would probably be, like, a USLI or, like, a foremost policy, right? So if you guys are trying to save a little bit of money show notes below we'll quote you up okay my team they'll take care of you uh back to the chart though water sewer 150 lawn care 44 p.m 160 right so of the 16 that comes in 974 on average should go out leaving you six and a quarter now this is where it gets dicey okay this is where it gets dicey you said you got a loan okay and uh, the best rate you can get is 4.8 percent so with uh, your contract to purchase price, which, by the way, these numbers, they might be, like, slightly off because, again, you were, like, uh, you're at 156.9 with, like, a 3% concession. So to the seller, it's a net price of, like, 152, 193. So, you know, I may be off a couple bucks on the down payment and the actual mortgage number here, but not enough to where it would have any effect on the performance of the deal. We might be talking like a couple bucks here or there. Like, guys, this is real estate investing. Like, if your monthly mortgage payment is 599 versus 603, that's a fucking irrelevant amount of money, okay? If $4 a month uh, matters to you, I'm going to tell you right now, just shut the video off. Don't learn anything else about real estate investing because real estate investing is not for you. If $4 one way or the other is an issue for you, right? So with your particular loan, the loan you, you know, 75%. So they would give you a loan of approximately $114,145. You're going to put down $38,048 at that 4.8% interest rate. We add in a five ninety nine mortgage to that. NOI of 626, that leaves you with an average, average net cash flow after your mortgage of only 27 a month, so 324 a year. So when you did the numbers, um, you were thinking approximately $200 a month was what you're going to be making after all said and done. In reality, it's actually going to be under 30 bucks. And you were on the fence, Lorenzo, with this investment at 200. It's only, you know, it's, it's like, only 30 it's 27 right that's you know it's like around 10 percent of that so with that said if you were on the fence before uh when you thought you were making 10 times as much money i would say you definitely want to exit this deal i would uh you know 
exercise your due diligence right to cancel the contract and I would suggest you cancel the contract because it's clearly not working out for you right it's only like a 0.8 percent cash on cash return now that said this deal I don't think it's necessarily going to work with you because again you're you're thinking about killing it at 200 a month cash flow versus what we actually are getting under 30 so I definitely think you should kill it for that that doesn't mean I think the property is necessarily overpriced uh, what you have to understand when you're investing in these properties, uh, people come to the Cleveland market because their pricing is really, really cheap, okay? But when you're trying to make sure you get the, the nicer properties with the nicer tenants in these B-class neighborhoods, like you told me you toured with your agent, right? You toured, obviously you toured Cleveland Heights. You also toured Euclid, University Heights, Lakewood, Parma, and Edgewater. Let's talk about these neighborhoods. A lot of these neighborhoods, the pricing, like this property is, is probably worth basically this, right? I think it's worth basically this. Just because it doesn't necessarily make you money in pencil out as an investment doesn't mean it's not worth that. A lot of these neighborhoods, man, they, they're they driven. The prices are driven by owner-occupied buyers, right? Like investors are not the only people that buy duplexes, right? People that want to live in a house and have extra space for extended family live in these. People that want to live in this neighborhood and they understand they have to have a mortgage. They want to have a tenant help pay down the mortgage, right? House hackers. So there's a lot of uh, reasons to buy properties and you know pay this price it's a nice property they don't have to worry about fixing it up so i'm not saying the property ain't worth that price because it pretty much is i'm just saying it doesn't work for you and you're going to find similar like lakewood the pricing in lakewood is higher the rents will be higher the pricing's higher uh but from like a cash on cash return perspective you're trying to like get like a a 10 percent cash on cash return it's probably gonna be pretty tough that might be a stretch it might not happen dog university heights taxes are insanely high prices are very high rents high yes but again you might not hit your goals parma parma doesn't even have that many multi-family properties they don't even really have as many rentals as you would anticipate parma is a nice little neighborhood don't get me wrong but the pricing there is definitely driven by owner occupants pricing in parma a lot cheaper than lakewood a lot cheaper than university heights but guess what so is the rent and as far as the stock of uh multi-family properties you're not going to see a lot of it parma the, the quintessential parma house is a 1200 square foot three bed one bath bungalow that sells for between 120 and 140 thousand and the person who bought it lives there okay that's what a typical parma property is if you're trying to rent that property you'd only rent for like a thousand maybe 1100 right so from a cash flow perspective parma is probably not where you want to target Leaves you with Euclid and Edgewater. Edgewater, you can find some nice stuff, and maybe on your next video, we'll we'll target to the Edgewater neighborhood. When you start to get over there, though, <coughs> it's very easy for you to get into C-class stuff, which I'm not saying is, like, totally the end of the world, but you said you don't really want to be in C-class stuff. But we could find you some decent, decent inventory in Edgewater. So I would say Edgewater, we could look into that and some of the surrounding... Uh, you know, areas of Cleveland over there. Euclid is another one you were looking at. Euclid, you'll find some really good pricing on single families. As far as duplexes go, well, just multifamily in general, right? Because you had told me you're very interested in quads, triplexes, and duplexes, all right? Because you're trying to use your loans, right? You need these 30-year loans, right? So one to four unit properties. You're interested in quads, triplexes, duplexes, and you said you're interested in singles, but you obviously want to get more units, you have to understand here, as we get to the more units, the inventory goes way, 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 way down, okay? So like Euclid, ton of singles. You can do some pretty good returns on singles. We could definitely hit your numbers on singles. Uh, quads, you're probably not going to see any quads in Euclid. There's some duplexes, but uh, typically, since the inventory is so much higher on all those singles, uh, you know, I, I see people doing pretty good on the singles, but that's going to require a little bit of renovation. Like, we're able to pick up homes where maybe the homeowner lived there for a long time, and it's just cosmetically ugly. And we can get a pretty good price on it because we're doing, like, a nice, like, twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 cosmetic renovation and then putting those tenants in there. I typically like to go with Section 8 tenants when I'm doing that, though, because the rents are maximized. As far as the Section 8 program, you're kind of wishy-washy on it. You were 50-50. You're like, maybe, maybe not. You were really leaning towards getting the best tenants, and I think you got the impression that if you get a Section 8 tenant versus paying a cash, uh, a cash paying tenant, that the Section 8 tenants are going to be rougher, tougher, harder to deal with. Not necessarily the case. 
guys, it's the neighborhood, okay? It's the neighborhood. Like, if we are in a high-risk neighborhood, all the tenants are high-risk, and the Section 8 tenants are the least risky because at least their income is guaranteed, right? Likewise, if you're in a really nice neighborhood, like you're in Lakewood, you don't need to worry about renting your property to Section 8 tenants because you have all these people with really great credit scores, you know, that are really responsible, willing to pay a high rent. You just rent it to them. There's a lot of those people trying to buy those properties. But when you're in a rougher neighborhood, these people, those Lakewood people that love the unit, love the neighborhood, went to college, have high credit scores, they're not trying to live over here. So it's really about the neighborhood. So when you're in Euclid based upon that tenant base, I like Section 8 for the city of Euclid, right? I do. So I would say Euclid singles will definitely help you accomplish your goal. Another area that's not on your radar, it's a little bit out of the ways, it's a little bit more east, it's out of Cuyahoga County, it's called Painesville. Uh, I would consider that to be like kind of like a B-class neighborhood. Taxes are a lot lower too, so your cash flow numbers are going to look better. Uh, we could possibly look into some Painesville stuff for you. Um, but in any of these neighborhoods, there's going to be a lot more single-family inventory, and then we're going to have some duplex inventory. Quads and triplexes are going to be very few and far between. And in uh, some of these neighborhoods specifically, like I know for a fact, Euclid, very small amount of duplex inventory, right? So I want you to keep all of that in mind and let me know your feedback and what you'd like me to do for your next videos. Again, I, I think you're probably definitely should be killing this deal. And then I'm doing a couple more videos for you. So now with this new information that I've given you a little bit more insight in the Cleveland market, let me know where you'd like to go. Cause I know you sent me like a lot of stuff. You sent me a ton of stuff about what you're looking for. But now that I've given you this feedback, I feel like what you're looking for should have changed. And I want to know. And if you want to continue working with your existing agent again, that's totally cool. I know you got a contractor as well, and you're trying to figure out your property management. Again, folks, if you want us to do it all, we will. Top to bottom, you go to our website. We got a fact on everything we charge. Our property management agreement is in there. Everything we charge, we can do it all top to bottom, but we do not have to. If you like this agent, I would do the same thing you did. Give me some new feedback. I'll make you like another video. And then, you know, you could go out with that new information. Maybe you try to take down that property or you just take the information I've given you and your agent, you talk to talk to her about it. And maybe you show her the video and she kind of sees, based on what I'm saying, what you like. And you guys go tour other properties that kind of fit into that criteria. Put it under contract again. Put it under contract like you did this one. And see if you can't get these sellers to let you make a contingent on just general due diligence or a video analysis from me. And then after you get it under contract, I'll do the same thing. I'll look it over. I'll run you an analysis, and I'll let you know one way or the other what I think about it. This one, I don't think it works out, so I think you got to go back to the drawing board, brother. So that is what we got to do, Lorenzo. So, again, let us know what you want to do going forward. Everybody else, if you're interested in working with me, same way we did with Lorenzo. Go to the Property Search for Sale tab, click the MLS Search and Analysis Show, order yourself a package, and if you're a new viewer to Holton Wise TV and you're still with me, I know we did a lot of information on today's show, and I know it's a long video, but do me a solid, do yourself a solid, actually, because this is great information, this is great education, and smash that subscribe button because Holton Wise TV is real estate investing made easy. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. U.S. Reeb is a full-service turnkey provider offering investors the opportunity to purchase single-family and multifamily investment properties in Cincinnati, Ohio, Dayton, Ohio, and Kansas City, Missouri. The purchase process is seamless, from reserving a property to obtaining financing, inspections, and insurance referrals, U.S. Reeb has a dedicated team in place to manage the process from start to finish. In addition, U.S. Reeb is also directly integrated with its own private placement fund for accredited investors. The fund seeks to raise $10 million to capitalize on the repositioning of distressed single-family and multifamily real estate. 
RentTech Direct provides you with an easy-to-use yet robust platform for managing your properties, complete with its built-in reporting and accounting system that can be customized to fit your business. For property managers, you get advanced features like simplified owner distributions, automated management and placement fees, an owner portal, plus the software is certified for trust accounting. All this comes backed by the highest rated customer support team in the industry. Certified by third parties and ranked number one by our clients year over year, you get unlimited free access to our US-based support team by phone, email, and chat who will help you getting started or anywhere along the way. G'day everyone, it's Angela Ramora here, your favorite Australian and the founder and owner of Ohio Cashflow. Over the last five years, Ohio Cashflow has established itself as the most reputable turnkey real estate investment company in the country. We offer solid B-class properties in Toledo, Ohio. We work and live in the same areas that we sell in. So when we sell your property, your tenants become our neighbors. We only take on a handful of investors every month. So for your chance to work with one of the best in the business, please fill out our investor application form, which you can find in the video notes below. Thanks for listening. And as we say down under, I'll catch you later, mate. Is that it? Yeah, we're done. All right, cool. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content, including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.